I know I get blessed for giving it, and you get blessed for hearing it. Amen? That's a double blessing. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 14. Hallelujah. First of all, chapter 14 deals with seven visions, each complete in itself. They are not presented in a sequence of events, but more of a picture with details following later. Now, to give an example of what I'm talking about, the announcement of doom upon Babylon is uttered actually in Revelation 14, verse 8. The announcement of the doom to come upon Babylon. However, the details of that are not presented until chapter 16, verses 17 through 21, you see. So, chapter, uh, uh, Revelation chapter 14 deals with these visions, each complete within itself, but they, they are not totally presented in a sequence of events, uh, but there are more details later. You still with me? Okay. Chapter 14, the beginning of verse 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the mount of Zion, and with him a hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Well, first of all, you notice there in verse 1 that the lamb is standing on the mount of Zion. How many of you know who the lamb is? That's right. It's our Lord Jesus Christ, as we already know. John the Baptist called him the Lamb, if you remember, in John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 29, when he saw him walking the earth. He said, Behold, there is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. If you also notice there in verse 1, it says that the Lamb that stood up on the Mount Zion. How many of you know what Zion means? Or where it's at? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. So we have a picture of the Lamb, our Lord Jesus Christ, standing on my, Mount Zion or Jerusalem. How many of you know, my dear people, that those days are not very, very far away? How many of you know, my dear people, that we are in the very last of the last days? How many of you know that every prophecy in the Word of God has already been fulfilled except one of the very last ones, which is the rapture of the church? How many of you know that? Over 2,000 prophecies have been fulfilled, line upon line, precept upon precept, verse upon verse, uh, with the exception of the rapture of the church. Uh, and that is where we are at right now in the church age. And we've got to come to grips to that, my dear people. If this town or this community or this nation is ever going to have the revival, it's got to happen now or it'll never have it because we won't even be here. You see? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, please remember that Mount Zion or Zion, Jerusalem, is a place, if you notice, that God seems to love most. Have you ever noticed that? He loves His children. Amen? How many of you know every time we turn on 6 o'clock news, they're talking about Israel, they're talking about Jerusalem, they're talking about Mount Zion. Why? It's the center of the universe, my dear people. It's the center of the universe. My dear people, God's love for Zion makes it a place of divine importance. The news commentators don't know why they talk about Israel so much. But it's of a divine importance to let his people know what's going on in the world. You see? Hallelujah. So watch the news. And watch Israel, watch Jerusalem, and watch what's going on, my dear people. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, talking about Mount Zion, if you would turn with me, please, to Psalm 132. I'm going to show you a few things here this evening. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord, all through the Word of God, all through the Old Testament, and even the new talks about Mount Zion. He, he, uh, he makes it a place of divine importance. Uh, if you notice there in, the, in Psalm chapter 132, verses 13, For the Lord hath chosen Zion. He hath desired it for his habitation. This is my rest forever. There will I dwell. And I have desired it. Did you see what he said there? The Lord says, this is my rest forever. There will I dwell, for I have desired it. Then verse 17, he says, There will I make the horn of David to bud. I have ordained a lamp for mine anointed. 
You know who he's talking about there? He's talking about Jesus. He's talking about Jesus. Mine anointed the horn of David to bud. And he says, his enemies, whose enemies? Uh, Jesus's. Will I clothe with shame, but upon himself shall his crown flourish. Hallelujah. 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 Then we see also, <clears throat> we're going to keep, read a few of these in the book of Psalms, uh, but there are an unlimited number of Old Testament prophecies uh, predicting Mount Zion uh, or Jerusalem uh, as the headquarters uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ's uh, earthly kingdom. Did you know that? That's where it's going to be. That's where it's going to be. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. We're going to just flip through here through just a few of the books of the Psalms to show you what I'm talking about. Beginning in Psalm 48, verse 2. Psalm 48, verse 2. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Word of God says, Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion. On the sides of the north, the city of the great king. How many of you know who the great king is tonight? Is our Lord Jesus Christ. So right there we have another picture of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now if we turn to Psalm 76. Psalm 76. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 76, verse 2. The Word of God says, In Salem also his, is his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion. Whose dwelling place? Our Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you're finding out why it's the center of the universe. Now we turn to Psalm 102. Psalm 102. Hallelujah. My dear people, look for the King because He's coming and He's coming soon. He's coming and He's coming soon. If you look at Psalm 102, verse 13, the Word of God says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is to come. Hallelujah. Then we look at Psalm 146, verse 10. 146, verse 10. The Word of God says, The Lord shall reign forever. Who's the Lord? Jesus. Our Lord Jesus. He says, The Lord shall reign forever, even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Then we read this next right over there. Psalm 149, verse 2. The Word of God says, Let Israel rejoice in Him that made Him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their King. Speaking of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Speaking of our Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah. Now flip, flip a couple chapters over there into the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, chapter 2. Hallelujah. My dear people, he's coming, and he's coming soon. Ah, hallelujah. I'll tell you. <clears throat> hallelujah. Isaiah, chapter 2, beginning in verse 2. And it shall come to pass in the last days. How many of you know that we're in the last days? You know, the world even knows we're in the last days. Did you know that? They don't know what to do about it, but they know we're in it. You know what they're doing? They're looking for a man on a white horse. They're looking for a man on a white horse. And my dear people, he's about to raise his ugly head. Hallelujah. You say, what do you mean you say that? Well, when that man on the right horse is loose, he's a, he's, a, he's a deceiver. He's trying to look good when he's bad. Revelation 6, verse 4. Isaiah 2, verse 2. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations... How many? All nations shall flow into it and many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of God of Jacob and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he, meaning our Lord Jesus Christ, shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, my dear people. He's coming and he's coming soon. That's the prophet Isaiah. And he was predicting the time of peace. The time of peace with our Lord Jesus Christ is walking this earth. 
And my dear people, it's coming, and it's coming soon. The hour of this beautiful peace uh, is getting very, very near indeed. Hallelujah. If you remember, if you look a little bit at history, Jerusalem was captured by the Israelis in 1967. It became the eternal, undivided capital of Israel on the 31st of July, 1980. Soon, Zion, Jerusalem, will become the capital of the entire world. It will become the capital of the entire world as soon as our Lord Jesus Christ comes at the second coming. How many of you know that there are two comings of Jesus Christ? How many of you know that? The first time he comes is Revelation 4, verse 1. And the Lord, the horn blows and he says, Come up hither. And we meet our Lord Jesus Christ in the clouds. His feet do not touch the earth. We meet him in the clouds. That's what the word, the church today calls the rapture of the church. It's a catching away. My dear people, that time is slowly getting upon us. Then the second coming comes in, the, in Revelation chapter 19. That's when his feet touch down at the Mount of Olives, which is a battle of Armageddon. And my dear people, we are with him. We come with him. That's the second coming. And we defeat the Antichrist. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, hallelujah. The way is being prepared in this generation. How many of you know that? How many of you know that we are the generation? This is the generation that witnessed the restoration of Israel. May 14th, 1948. Our Lord Jesus Christ said that this generation shall not pass. What generation? The one that witnesses the restoration of the nation of Israel. My dear people, there was no nation of Israel all the way back to 608 B.C. The first night time even Israel come along was 1948. And my dear people, a generation in the Bible is 40 years. 40 years. So time is short, my dear people. He's coming, and he's coming soon. Hallelujah. What you must remember is that the rapture of the church must happen first. The rapture of the church must happen first. Revelation 4.1 So that we can return with Him at the second coming. Revelation 19 verse 14. Since we return with Him when His feet touch down at the Mount of Olives, it is very plain that the rapture cannot be delayed much longer, my dear people. It cannot be delayed much longer. I'm going to tell you something. They are negotiating a peace agreement right now. Are you aware of that? They are negotiating a peace agreement right now. How many of you know that the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 27, talks about that peace agreement? They call it a covenant. They call it a covenant. And when the Antichrist signs that, my dear people, we have already been raptured. We're not even here to witness it. Did you know that? We're already gone. And you know what? They are negotiating that peace agreement this very moment. You better believe it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Our remaining time on the earth is getting very, very limited. You say, how do you know that? Look around you. Look at the signs of the times. You hear people talk about, oh, there's judgment upon the earth. My dear people, it's not judgment. It's signs, upon, it's signs of the earth. It's signs of the times. The sky is red. Can you not discern the signs of the time? Matthew 24. We're already seeing the spirit of the Antichrist beginning to raise. Where? Germany. Look at the news. Look at the news. Aren't you seeing Nazism raising up again? That is the spirit of the Antichrist. That is the spirit of the Antichrist. Hallelujah. The false prophet is about to pop up his head. There are many, many things, my dear people. I can't go in tonight. I don't have enough time. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, back to the book of Revelation, chapter 14. Hallelujah. Back to Revelation chapter 14. We're still on verse 1. <laughs> verse 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood up on the Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty-four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. How many of you know who the hundred and forty-four thousand are? They are the Jewish evangelists. 144,000 Jewish evangelists that, that also return with us. And they have our Father's name written on their foreheads. In other words, they were sealed or saved, is a better word for that, in Revelation chapter 7, verses 3 and 4. I'll show you that real quick. 
because I want you to make sure you know this. In Revelation chapter 7, verses 3 and 4, the Word of God plainly shows here, it says, uh, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants uh, of our God in their foreheads. You see, those servants had to be sealed. In other words, they had to be saved on their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, or in other words, saved. And there was sealed 144,000 of the tribes of the children of Israel. So you see, those 144,000 Jewish evangelists were with our Lord Jesus Christ at the Mount of Zion. Hallelujah. What's that tell you? They were already been raptured. They already been raptured in that verse before then. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let's go back to chapter 14 of the book of Revelation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we go to verse 2. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. A majestic sound fills the heavens. And the earth, as the heavenly chorus, as, as the Lord calls it, as many, many waters. In other words, it is an unusual amount of octaves. A great thunder and harps, or in other words, harps are, are a symbol of joy. Then we read in verse 3, it says, And they sung, meaning talking about the 144,000, And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts. How many of you remember who the four beasts were? Hallelujah. And the elders. How many of you remember who all the elders represented? i got tapes back there on the table. Amen. If you don't know those answers, they're back there in those tapes. Amen. Hallelujah. And the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000. No man could learn that song but these 144,000. Well, why is that? Because that new song that these 144,000 Jews differs is that it is exclusively their own. Why? Because they were pure. They were holy. And they were sanctified. You see? So they have their own song. They have their own song. If you notice there in verse 4, it says, These are they, speaking of the 144,000, these are they which were not defiled with women. For they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb, wheresoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being their first fruits unto God and unto the Lamb. Well, my dear people, what it's talking about there, in other words, they are free from spiritual fornication. Spiritual fornication, as described in the book of James, chapter 4, verse 4. I want to show you that briefly. If you turn there, please, with a chapter, James, chapter 4, verse 4. Thank you, Jesus. James, chapter 4, verse 4. The Lord God says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enemy with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. That's spiritual fornication. That's spiritual fornication. It's idolatry, the ultimate form of spiritual fornication. In other words, and that is the sin of the hour during the tribulation hour. That is the sin of the hour. So what you've got here is you've got uh, some untainted Jews, uh, these 144,000 who walk the pathway of holiness, uh, and they are the first fruits uh, of that tribulation period. If you notice there in verse 4 of Revelation 14, it says, These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits uh, unto God and to the Lamb. Then if you notice there in verse 5, it says, and in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. In other words, uh, in the tribulation hour under the Antichrist, uh, you've got to remember that the Antichrist uh, is a product of Satan, is he not? All right, how many of you know that Satan is a deceiver? 
He is a liar. And it's exactly how the Antichrist works, just like the false prophet also, by deceit. They are deceivers. So in the tribulation hour, under the Antichrist, uh, produces a world that's inundated with deceit. It is inundated with deceit. Uh, and during this age of fraud, the redeemed Jews do not follow the lies of Satan, the father of all lies. John 8:44. Satan is a deceiver. Don't ever forget that. Don't ever forget that. He's got no power. He is a, a deceiver. He is a liar. He's a father of all lies. Now I'm going to show you the fulfillment of that, uh, that uh, right there in uh, Ze Ze Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 13. You'll see the, the fulfillment of that verse there in, in Revelation. You say, well, where in the world is Zephaniah? Well, if your pages are sucked together... <laughs> Maybe you need to read it a little bit more. Huh? Are your pages stuck together? <clears throat> well, my dear people, Zephaniah is the fourth book from the New Testament towards the front. Amen? It is the fourth book from the New Testament towards the front. I want to show you this. This talks about the 144,000. <laughs> Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 13. Hallelujah. And it says, The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies. In other words, there's no guile found in their mouth. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. So you have a fulfillment there of Zephaniah chapter 3, 13 in Revelation chapter 14, verse 5. That's the fulfillment of that. Amen? Now let's go back to the book of Revelation chapter 14. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank God I'm free tonight. How many of you, thank God you're free tonight. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 14, where am I at? Verse 6. Verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Hallelujah. First of all, this verse in verse 6 introduces us to the first of the angels. This is the first of the angels who proclaim a special message unto the world. They proclaim a special message unto the world. It's called the everlasting gospel. The everlasting gospel. What do you mean everlasting? It is a combination. It is a combination of salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ and judgment. That's the reason why it's called the everlasting gospel. It is a combination of salvation through the blood of Jesus and judgment. Now let's go on to verse 7. Verse 7. Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come. And worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. In other words, the message here in verse 7, this angel's message, is a message at God's final call to a Christ-rejecting world. What are they saying? They are saying, Repent or die. That's the last call. Repent or die. In America, we call it turn or burn. <laughs> turn or burn. Huh? He's saying, repent or die. Before you see, my dear people, this is mankind's last opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Aren't you glad you're saved tonight? If you're not saved tonight, you've got big problems. <laughs> you've got big troubles. Amen? Because I'm telling you, and I'm here to tell you tonight, that Jesus Christ could come this very night. Do you know that you're saved tonight? Did you know that, you, do you know that you're truly born again? <clears throat> no, that's not an American term. It's John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 3. That's a Jesus term. It's in every Bible ever printed. <clears throat> you better believe it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Let's keep going here. Verse 8. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. I can't wait to give that message, but I can't give it tonight. <laughs> Amen? 
I can't wait to give that message. I really got a lot of revelation on this one. Hallelujah. I studied it a little bit already, <clears throat> but I can't give it tonight. We'll cover the Babylon in, in chapters uh, Revelation 17 and 18, but we can't do it tonight because it's an in-depth study of Babylon. Amen? So let's keep going. Revelation 14 chapters, we're going to be here with chapters uh, 9, 10, and 11, and we'll come back to them. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out to, without measure into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Hallelujah. Well, my dear people, this third angel, if you notice there, the third angel in verse 9, he announces the doom of these or those people who are worshiping the Antichrist. He is announcing the doom of those people who are worshiping the Antichrist and his image. They are announcing the doom of those who have received the mark of the beast. You remember we ministered about that last Sunday night, the mark of the beast, the 666 in their foreheads and in their hand. If you remember, then please remember this, that it's in their hands or in their foreheads, not on do you remember the te technology already exists for that? It's called Michael Tech Michael uh, Micro something or other. <laughs> Amen. Already exists. Do you remember that? Hallelujah. Well, what it's talking about here, the third angel, is these individuals who have received the mark of the beast will taste of the wine of the wrath of God. Those that have received the mark of the beast. The taste of the, they will taste of the wine of the wrath of God. My dear people, are you born again tonight? And I mean truly born again. Have you confessed Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Have you confessed Him and know Him in your heart? Not know about Him. Know Him. And I mean know Him. Because my dear people, when you know Him, you're free. You can raise your hands and praise Him. Because you truly, truly know Him. Amen? Hallelujah. Go on here to verse 10. Back it up, actually. Revelation 14. <coughs> if you notice there, it says, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture. If you notice there, the Word of God says, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture. In other words, it is not diluted or weakened. It is not diluted or weakened as it is stirred up. What? The wrath of God. Hallelujah. Big troubles. Big troubles for people on the earth. Then we notice in verse 11, it says, And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever. And ever.